Hello and welcome to Spec Transfer. Today we'll be looking at topic 3.2.2, all cells arise from other cells from the AQA A-level biology specification. Let's look at the specification. It starts off with the cell cycle as well as mitosis and cytokinesis. As it says here, meiosis, which is the other type of nuclear division, is covered later on in the specification. Then we'll talk about cancer as well as binary fission, which is the type of cell division in prokaryotes. Finally, it mentions viral replication, and I've talked about viral replication in the video directly before this video. So if you want to cover this part of the specification, just click on the button bottom left, and I will have covered this part of the specification in the video before this one. So let's make a start. Within multicellular organisms, not all cells retain the ability to divide. Eukaryotic cells that do retain the ability to divide show a cell cycle. And as I've previously said, there are two types of cell division in eukaryotes, mitosis and meiosis. So today we'll be talking about mitosis. Mitosis is a part of the cell cycle. In mitosis, a parent cell divides to produce two genetically identical daughter cells. They each have identical copies of DNA produced by the parent cell during DNA replication. Mitosis is needed for firstly growth and also repair of damaged tissue. We need to know four key stages in mitosis. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. In prophase, the chromosomes condense and get shorter and fatter. The centrioles move to opposite poles, the nucleolus or nucleoli disappear, and the nuclear envelope breaks down. Spindle fibres start to form and attach to the centromeres. Then we have metaphase. In metaphase, the spindle fibres pull the chromosomes so that they line up along the equator, also known as the metaphase plate. Then we have anaphase. In anaphase, the centromeres divide, separating each pair of sister chromatids. The spindle fibres shorten and in doing so pull the chromatids to opposite poles of the cell. They are now referred to as chromosomes again. Finally, we have telophase. In telophase, chromosomes begin to lengthen and uncoil and in doing so disappear. Separate nuclear envelopes form around each group of chromosomes. The spindle fibres disintegrate. The cytoplasm divides to form two separate cells, which is known as cytokinesis. Here we have sister chromatids, and this overall is referred to as a chromosome. The sister chromatids are joined together by a centromere. This occurs in a diploid cell. Next, let's have a look at the cell cycle. So mitosis is actually only a very small part of the cell cycle. Most of the cell cycle is made up of a period called interphase, which happens before mitosis. Interphase is subdivided into three stages and is a period of cell growth and DNA replication. Firstly, we have gap phase, G1. In G1, a cell grows and increases in volume as new cytoplasm and organelles are made. Next we have S, synthesis. Here the cell replicates its DNA. Thirdly, we have G2, gap phase two. In G2, a cell continues to grow. A cell also synthesizes enzymes and structures needed for mitosis. Then comes mitosis, followed by cytokinesis. In an exam, you may be asked to do a few calculations in relation to either mitosis or the cell cycle. For example, calculate the time taken for each stage in mitosis, which is a common question. To do this, simply divide the number of cells in that phase by the total number of cells undergoing mitosis, which will give you the proportion of cells in that phase. Then multiply this by the total time taken for one cell cycle. Calculating mitotic index is also a common question. The mitotic index shows the proportion of cells undergoing mitosis in a piece of tissue. To calculate the mitotic index, simply divide the number of cells undergoing mitosis by the total number of cells in the sample. In practice, the number of cells undergoing mitosis is taken to be the number of cells that have visible chromosomes. So if you are given a microscope image of a piece of tissue, the number of cells undergoing mitosis will be the number of cells which have visible chromosomes. 
The mitotic index is useful for determining when a tissue is becoming cancerous and for assessing the effectiveness of cancer treatment. So how does cancer arise? Mitosis is usually a controlled process controlled by genes. Normally when cells have divided enough times to make enough new cells, they stop. But when genes that control cell division mutate, this can lead to uncontrolled cell division and the formation of tumours and cancers. There are two types of tumour, benign and malignant tumours. Benign tumours do not spread to other parts of the body and they grow slowly. Whereas malignant tumours are cancers, these are tumours that invade neighbouring tissues and grow quickly. So let's have a look at cancer treatment. Cancer treatments work by disrupting the cell cycle which kills tumour cells. However, treatments do not distinguish normal cells from tumour cells which means that normal cells are affected and kill too. However, tumour cells divide much more frequently so treatments are more likely to kill tumour cells. We have three different types of cancer treatment, surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy. In surgery, the tumour is removed. However, this may be difficult because of the location, for example, if it is in the head. Radiotherapy involves radiation damaging DNA. At several points in the cell cycle, DNA is checked for damage. If severe damage is detected, the cell kills itself, preventing further tumour growth. Finally, we have chemotherapy, where drugs are used to kill cancerous cells by preventing them from dividing or damaging them so that they kill themselves. For example, drugs that prevent the synthesis of enzymes required for DNA replication. The cell hereby can't enter the S phase and kills itself. Finally, we'll have a look at cell division in prokaryotic cells, which is called binary fission. This can be as fast as one division every 20 minutes. In binary fission, the cell replicates its genetic material before splitting into two genetically identical daughter cells. In binary fission, first the bacterium replicates its DNA and plasmids. The circular DNA strands move to opposite poles. Finally, the cytoplasm divides and new cell walls grow to divide the original cell into two identical daughter cells, each with one copy of the circular DNA and a variable number of plasmids. Great, so back to our specification. We've looked at the cell cycle, we've looked at mitosis and cytokinesis, we've looked at cancer, and we've also looked at binary fission. And as I said, viruses has been covered in one of my previous videos. Thank you for watching Spec Transfer. Next time we'll be looking at transfer across cell membranes.